Hello people of YouTube, if you found this video, you're probably stuck in an installation, you're trying to look for some instructions on how to install this ceiling fan. This video is going to do all that from start to finish. Voila! This is the 52 inch Ackerley Home Decorators Collection ceiling fan, or better known as the 52 inch Ackerley ceiling fan by Home Decorators Collection. This video is going to cover everything from unpacking the fan to turning it on and off. And uh, yeah, so if you need some help and you want to fast forward, just use the links below. That'll take you to each individual step of the installation process. And if you find this video helpful, click like and subscribe at the end. That'll help other people find it too. So let's get started. This is an indoor-outdoor fan, so it's going to look great indoors, but it's damp rated for outdoor use in covered patios and porches. It's not wet rated, so it cannot be exposed directly to water. The fan is a tri-mount fan, meaning that it can be installed without the down rod on a low ceiling, or with the included down rod, or on a higher angled ceiling with an extension down rod sold separately. The fan has quick fit installation features like a slide on mounting bracket, a twist lock light shade, and an easy plug connector to make wiring the fan to the remote receiver quick and easy. The fan also features a 17.5 watt LED module light kit, which is equivalent to 120 watts of incandescent light and will last for years and years, so there will never be any bulbs to replace. Just a couple of notes before beginning. You want to make sure that the electric is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch, and if you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. Another note is when you're hanging this fan in the ceiling, if you're replacing just a light fixture, you're going to want to make sure that the outlet box is clearly marked acceptable for fan support. If the outlet box is not marked acceptable for fan support, you're going to need to switch that out before beginning. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan. We're just opening up the manual to the parts page to make sure that we have all the parts before beginning and that way we don't get stuck along the way. So first up we have five blades. We have the ball and down rod assembly. We have the canopy with the canopy ring and the mounting bracket. The mounting bracket is pre-installed inside the canopy with the canopy ring. We'll show you in the first step how to remove the mounting bracket to get started. We have the decorative motor collar cover. We have the light kit pan. We have the LED module light kit, the twist and lock shade, the fan motor. You're going to have an extension wire. If you're using an extension down rod on a higher angled ceiling, you just plug this in to extend the wiring for your use. You're also going to have the remote and receiver, and you're going to have a hardware pack. And the hardware pack has the rubber grommet for close to ceiling mounting, three electric wire nuts, and the blade attachment screws. Now a couple tools we're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, some wire cutters and strippers, electrical tape, and we'd like to use a voltage line tester to make sure that the lines aren't live before we begin. And last but not least, you're going to need a ladder. So we have everything here, we're ready to begin. The mounting bracket comes pre-assembled inside the canopy with the canopy ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first begin by twisting the canopy ring counterclockwise to expose the screws. You'll notice that there are two J-slotted screws located on either side of the canopy, and two standard screws located on either side of the canopy. Begin by first removing and saving the two standard screws on the canopy. Next, loosen, but do not remove, the two J-slotted screws. Once those two screws are loosened, simply twist the mounting bracket counterclockwise to remove it from the canopy. This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. The mounting bracket has two slots on the top that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. To install the mounting bracket, simply align the slots with the screws in the outlet box and slide into place before tightening. This is just a demonstration to show how easy it is. Before installing the mounting bracket, loosen but do not remove the two screws in the outlet box. Next, feed the house supply wires through the top hole of the mounting bracket and align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box and then slide the mounting bracket into place. Then use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both screws.
It's important to make sure both screws are completely tightened and the mounting bracket is securely fastened. The fan is shipped with cardboard motor stops to prevent the motor from spinning during shipment. Simply remove and discard these two pieces. For close to ceiling mounting, first remove the warning label on the set screw of the motor collar, and then remove and save three of the six screws on top of the motor. This is just every other screw. Next, take the rubber gasket from the hardware pack and feed the fan wires through the center hole of the gasket. The gasket will rest on top of the motor, and the large holes of the gasket will align with the screws that are remaining in the motor. The small holes of the gasket will align with the screw holes from the screws that were removed and saved. Next, you'll remove the decorative ring from the canopy. The ring is held in place by three plastic studs inside the canopy. To remove the decorative ring, simply press those three studs with your thumb. Once that ring is removed, feed the wires through the bottom of the canopy so that the canopy rests on top of the rubber gasket. You'll notice that there's notched cutouts inside the canopy that will align with the screws that are still in the motor. And the screw holes in the canopy will align with the screw holes from the screws that were removed and saved. Secure the canopy to the motor using the three screws that were removed and saved and a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure all three screws are completely tightened. Now the fan is ready to be hung. The mounting bracket has a hook to hold the fan in place for wiring. Hang the fan on the hook using the standard screw hole of the canopy. This is just a close-up demonstration of how to hang the fan. To hang the fan, lift the entire assembly up towards the ceiling and remember to use the standard screw hole, not the J-slot, and hang the fan on the hook of the mounting bracket. Do not leave the fan unattended while it is hanging like this. Before routing the wires and installing the down rod, you'll first need to loosen but not remove the set screw on the motor collar. Use a flathead screwdriver to loosen but not remove this screw. It's also important to note the safety tab on the motor collar. This will lock the down rod in place should it ever loosen over time. Begin routing the wires by feeding the wires through the bottom of the canopy ring. Make sure that the slots are facing towards the ceiling. Place the canopy ring on top of the motor housing. Next, take the down rod and gently pull the green ground cable from the inside of the down rod and ball assembly. Next, feed the down rod through the canopy so that the down rod portion exits through the smallest hole of the canopy. Then, slide the motor collar cover onto the down rod, making sure that the largest opening is facing towards the bottom. Next, feed the wires through the down rod so that the plug exits the ball portion of the ball and down rod assembly. Gently pull those wires through until the down rod meets the motor collar. Then, secure the down rod by screwing it into the motor collar until completely tightened. Once the down rod is completely tightened, use a flathead screwdriver to completely tighten the set screw on the motor collar. Once the set screw is completely tightened, slide the motor collar cover down till it meets the motor. Now the fan is ready to be hung. If you have more than one remote control fan in the house, it's a good idea to change the dip switches in the remote and the receiver. The dip switches in the remote are located inside the battery compartment. The dip switches on the receiver are located under a rubber plug. Simply pull the plug up to expose the dip switches. And use a small tool to set those switches to any combination of up or down. You can set the dip switches to any combination as long as both the remote and the receiver have the same dip switch settings. 
Once the dip switches are set in the receiver, replace the rubber plug to seal it up. Place the batteries inside the remote control, according to the diagrams inside the battery compartment. This fan features a dimmable light kit, but if you'd like to disable the dimming feature, set the light control switch to O. The factory default setting is the switch on the D position, which enables the dimming feature. Once the switches have been set and the battery is installed, replace the battery cover onto the remote control. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the tab inside the mounting bracket. That tab will align with the slot in the ball and downrod assembly. When hanging the fan, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the entire assembly until you feel that tab engage the slot on the ball. This is just a close-up demonstration of how it works. To hang the fan, lift the fan assembly up to the ceiling. Note the location of the slot that will align with the tab in the mounting bracket. Insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the entire fan assembly until you feel that tab engage the slot. The fan will drop into place when properly seated. The receiver slides into place inside the mounting bracket. To install the receiver, make sure the flat side of the receiver is facing towards the ceiling. The receiver has wires coming out of both sides, the plug that will connect to the fan wires, and then the red and white wire that will connect to the house wires. Make sure the fan wires are to one side of the mounting bracket and the house wires are to the other side to make wiring easier. Then insert the antenna end of the receiver into the mounting bracket so that it rests on top of the ball and down rod. If installing the fan without the down rod, the receiver will just rest inside the mounting bracket. Begin wiring the fan by taking the plug from the fan wires and inserting that into the plug from the receiver. The connectors will simply snap together. Next, take the green wire from the down rod and the green wire from the mounting bracket and twist those two wires together. If installing close to ceiling, you'll only have one green wire from the mounting bracket. Once those wires are twisted together, connect those wires to the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Twist those wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the white wire from the receiver and twist that wire together with the white wire from the house supply lines. These are the neutral connections. Twist those two wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Finally, take the red wire from the receiver and twist that wire together with the black house supply wire. Finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once all the wire connections have been made, gently tuck the wires up to the mounting bracket to make room for the canopy to attach. Attach the canopy to the mounting bracket by aligning the two J slots of the canopy with the two screws that were loosened but not removed in the mounting bracket. Then lift the canopy up to the ceiling, align those slots with the screws, and push up and twist to engage those screws in the slots and hold the canopy in place. To attach the canopy, lift the fan assembly off the hook of the mounting bracket and align the J slots with the screws that were loosened in the mounting bracket, push up and twist to hold the fan in place. Secure the canopy using the two screws that were removed and saved in the first step of the installation. Use a Phillips head screwdriver and insert the screw into the standard hole of the canopy. Completely tighten this screw. Repeat for the screw on the opposite side of the canopy and then completely tighten the two remaining screws in the J slots. Once all four screws are completely tightened, you'll attach the canopy ring. The canopy ring has four slots, two on either side of the canopy ring. Those will align with the four screws in the canopy. 
To attach the canopy ring, align the slots with the screws and lift the canopy ring up towards the ceiling and twist to engage the slots and lock the canopy ring in place. Before installing the blades, make sure the blade labeled this side up is facing towards the ceiling. The blades attach to the fan using three holes in the blade that will line with three holes in the bottom of the fan motor. Insert the end of the fan blade through the slot in the side of the motor. Align the three screw holes in the fan blade with the three holes in the bottom of the motor. Secure the blade using the blade attachment screws. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to start the first screw. Do not completely tighten the screw as you'll need a little bit of play to align the other two screw holes. Insert the second screw into the screw hole and start that screw using a Phillips head screwdriver. Remember, do not completely tighten this screw yet. Start the third screw in the third hole of the fan blade. Completely tighten this screw and then completely tighten the two remaining screws. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. Make sure all the fan blade screws are completely tightened to ensure proper operation. Before attaching the light kit pan, remove the rubber band holding the light kit wires together. The light kit pan attaches to the fan using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws on the black bracket at the base of the motor. Begin by removing and saving one of the three screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then loosen, but do not remove, the two remaining screws in the black bracket. Next, feed the light wires through the center hole of the light kit pan, and then align the keyhole slots with the two screws that were loosened in the black bracket. Push up and twist to engage those keyhole slots and hold the light kit pan in place. Then, use the screw that was removed and saved and insert that screw into the standard screw hole of the light kit pan. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten that screw and then tighten the two remaining screws. The LED module connects to the light kit pan using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws on the outer edge of the light kit pan. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove and save one of the three screws from the light kit pan, and then loosen but do not remove the two remaining screws. Next, insert the wire plug from the LED module into the wire plug at the base of the fan. Lift the LED module up and align the keyhole slots with the two screws that were loosened in the light kit pan. Push up and twist to engage the screws in the keyhole slots. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and a Phillips head screwdriver and insert the screw into the standard screw hole of the LED module. Completely tighten that screw and then tighten the two remaining screws. The light shade uses a twist lock system to connect to the fan. There are three flat sides on the light shade that will align with the three nubs inside the light kit pan. Align the flat sides of the light shade with the three nubs in the light kit pan, then press the light shade up and twist clockwise until tight. This fan also features a full function remote control. To turn the fan and light off at the same time, press the power button. The fan has a memory, so next time the fan is turned on using the power button, it will return to its last settings. For example, if the fan is on medium speed with the light on when the fan is turned off, the next time it is turned on, it will return with medium speed and the light on. The fan speed button will cycle through the fan's three speeds. Press once for high speed, twice for medium speed, three times for low speed, and another time to turn it off. Press the remote light button to turn the light on. Press it again to turn it off. Press and hold to cycle through the dimming. Release the button once the desired brightness is achieved. 
The Comfort Breeze setting randomly alternates the fan's three speeds to create an organic wind effect. Press the button to start the Comfort Breeze mode. Press the button again to disable the feature. The Fan Timer button will automatically turn the fan off at a desired setting. Press once to turn the fan off in two hours, twice for four hours, and three times for eight hours. Press one more time to disable the timer. This fan features a three-speed reversible motor. The reverse switch is located on top of the motor housing underneath the motor collar cover. The factory default setting is switched left to create a downward airflow for use during the warmer months. During the cooler months, you may want to reverse the airflow to pull warm air from the ceiling and push it down into the room. Access the reverse switch and change the reverse switch position to reverse the airflow of the fan. Make sure the fan is not running before attempting to reverse the switch. Congratulations, the ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to kick back, relax with a nice tall beverage, and enjoy your brand new ceiling fan. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below. That'll help other people find it as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy.